Good afternoon, this is the National Weather Service in Springfield, Missouri, with an updated weather briefing on the active stretch of weather we're expecting through the rest of this week and into the weekend. The bottom line up front is that there's a slight to enhance risk for severe weather late this evening and tonight, and then again tomorrow, with all hazards possible on both rounds. There's also chances for severe weather Thursday and Friday, with increasing confidence for heavy rainfall and flooding late this week into the weekend. Before diving into the severe and flooding risk through the week, we wanted to also point out that winds will be fairly gusty through tonight in much of the morning and afternoon hours tomorrow, with gusts between 30 and 40 miles per hour across the entire area, especially for areas along and west of the Interstate 49 corridor. We could see occasional gusts over 40 miles per hour, however, we're not currently expecting a wind advisory to be issues, as these will mainly be a nuisance to those high-profile vehicles and any unsecured outdoor objects. We could potentially see some elevated fire weather conditions as well with these higher wind gusts, however, that will remain conditional on how dry it can get before the moisture begins increasing across the area. For this evening and tonight, we're expecting two rounds of severe weather to be possible across southeast Kansas and the Missouri Ozarks. That first round is going to be very conditional with the potential for isolated supercells to develop and affect areas mainly along and west of the Interstate 49 corridor. This is primarily conditional on if those storms can break the capping inversion and develop, and if they do form, then all hazards are going to be possible. Here's a look at the different severe hazard probabilities, and as you can see, there's a 15 to 30% chance of severe hail where you see those yellow and red colors here on the far left image, with that hatched area in southeast Kansas indicating the potential for significant hail um, 2 inches or greater. This middle image here shows a 15 to 30% chance of severe winds with that ha uh, hatched area affecting east central Kansas in west central Missouri and then areas northward. And then finally, this image here on the right shows the tornado outlook with a 5 to 10% chance where you see those brown and yellow colors with that potential for significant tornadoes again in our southeast Kansas counties where you see this hatched area here. Again, this would be if those storms can overcome the cap and develop. If they can come to fruition, then we would expect them to push into our area anytime after 9 p.m. this evening, again, mainly affecting areas primarily along and west of I-49. Additionally, later in the early morning hours, there's a potential for storms to develop along the cold front that's expected to push through, with that line of thunderstorms pushing through sometime after 5 a.m. and then pushing through our entire area through the morning and afternoon hours. We'll take a look at the severe risk with that line of storms tomorrow here in a second. Regarding our confidence levels for this evening and tonight, the conditional nature of these storms leads to a lower confidence in those supercells developing and affecting our areas. Again, it's really going to be determined by if that cap can break and those storms do end up developing. Confidence is a little higher on that second round with that line of storms developing along the cold front overnight. Again, restating the potential alternative scenarios, if that cap does remain in place, it'll hinder any thunderstorms from developing uh, later this evening, mainly that, uh, that first round of supercells. So we wouldn't see that first round pushing through this evening. But if they do form, then again, all hazards would be possible along and west of I-49. Additional severe thunderstorms will be possible tomorrow morning and afternoon for much of our forecast area. If storms continue along that cold front that will sweep through, then the environment will allow for all hazards to be possible with potentially significant hazards primarily east of Highway 63 during that afternoon and evening time frame. The Storm Prediction Center has issued a slight risk for much of our area where you see this yellow color here with an enhanced risk over our southeast counties and then eastward. Looking at the severe hazard probabilities for tomorrow, you can see that much of our area is in that 15 to 30 percent probability of significant hail because it is hatched. So we could see hail sizes up to golf balls, even potentially greater than golf balls. The greatest wind threat is along and east of Highway 63, as you can see here in this middle picture where we see that hatched risk. 
showing the potential for winds up to 70, even higher, up to 75 miles per hour. Again, mainly in the afternoon and evening hours if those storms can redevelop along that front and increase in severity. And then the tornado risk here on the right image shows a 5 to 10% risk in the brown and yellow areas with that hatched area showing the potential for significant tornadoes, mainly over south central Missouri and then areas eastward. Again, looking at our confidence levels for tomorrow, we have medium confidence in these storms occurring. However, the westward extent of where these storms develop still remains a question. Areas west of Highway 65 have kind of a lower confidence in storms uh, in the morning hours, but as time continues throughout the afternoon and evening, as that line continues pushing east, our confidence does start to increase as that day goes on, with the highest confidence of storms occurring east of Highway 63. Here's a look at an estimated timeline of storms tonight through tomorrow. So late this evening into the early overnight hours still remains a pretty low chances due to that conditional nature of if those supercells can develop. If they can, then we'll see those chances along and west of I-49 increase there. And then you can see that line of storms bringing that potential for storms to move across the area from west to east, beginning as early as 3 a.m. near I-49, and then progressing east throughout the morning and afternoon areas uh, before exiting the area late uh, Wednesday evening. After tomorrow, we are not in the clear yet as additional severe thunderstorms will once again be possible on Thursday over the far southeast in south central Missouri, where we do have a marginal and a slight risk issued for those areas. With this still three days out, the details are still fairly uncertain, uh, but we could potentially see these uh, risk areas shift depending on how things set up. Right now, the primary hazard looks to be large hail as that front stalls out to our south, but again, we're going to have to assess as we get closer to this time period. And then finally on Friday, the SPC is highlighting another risk for severe weather along and southeast of I-44, as there should be enough shear and instability to allow for scattered thunderstorms to develop. Again, the main hazard looks like large hail currently, but we'll continue to monitor how things progress as we get closer to late week. Now we're going to shift from the severe potential to the flooding risk late this week into the weekend. With several rounds of heavy rainfall expected Wednesday through Saturday, several inches of rainfall could pose a flash flooding risk and increase those river levels. The image here on the right shows the experimental flood hazard outlook, which highlights a considerable flash, urban, and small stream flooding risk over southeast Missouri, with the highest confidence for widespread significant river flooding over the eastern Ozarks through the lower Ohio Valley. We have issued a flood watch beginning Thursday morning and lasting through Saturday evening for counties southeast of I-44 as confidence increases. For this area within that flood watch, we could see heavy rainfall amounts of at least 3 to 5 inches with higher amounts of 6 to 10 inches possible, and then that would result in significant flooding and flash flooding. Areas north and west of the watch could see lower amounts tapering off the further northwest you go. As we get closer to this time frame, we'll continue monitoring any need of expanding this watch further north or west if confidence increases enough to warrant that. The Weather Prediction Center does highlight our southeast in a marginal to slight risk of excessive rainfall tomorrow afternoon through tomorrow night, with the highest chances near West Plains and then east, where we could see localized flooding with that line of storms pushing through. Thursday and Thursday night, pretty much the same area highlighted in that marginal to slight risk of excessive rainfall from Wednesday is highlighted on Thursday as well, as we could see several inches of rainfall from those repeated rounds of thunderstorms, causing that flash flooding and increased river level risk. The best chances for our area for excessive rainfall look to be Friday and Saturday, as the Weather Prediction Center has highlighted our area in a slight to moderate risk with the highest potential along and southeast of the I-44 corridor. 
Despite the multiple rounds of heavy rainfall occurring through late week and into the weekend, there's still some uncertainty in the exact rainfall amounts and where that corridor of highest rainfall sets up. The image here on the right shows the spread between the upper and lower ranges of the 72-hour precipitation amounts for the West Plains area. So as you can see, there's still a fairly large spread in total rainfall amounts with either three and a half inches on the lower end or potentially up to seven inches on the upper end occurring by the weekend. So with this uncertainty still involved, we're going to have to continue monitoring where that front stalls out and then what the higher resolution models show once we get closer to this time period. That being said, here are the probabilities of seeing rainfall amounts greater than two inches Thursday through Saturday, with high chances, especially southeast of I-44. Again, this axis of heavy rainfall could still shift and change as we get closer to this time frame. Here we see the probability of greater than four inches of rain, again, with the higher 60 to 90% chances over south central Missouri, and then increasing further south and east. And then finally, the potential for greater than six inches of rain is approximately 30 to 50% over our far southeast, again, with the better chances remaining southeast of our area. Finally, with the excessive rainfall and flash flooding potential, we're also concerned about potential river flooding, especially in the rivers over in our southeast counties. This table here shows the probabilities of exceeding the various flood stages with the current and Jack's Fork River Basin showing the highest probabilities of exceeding at least minor flood stage and potentially moderate flood stage as well. And then those river basins that aren't within this box here could still see river rises, so we're going to have to keep monitoring the potential for river flooding with these upcoming several rounds of heavy rainfall. Here's a couple safety graphics for the severe weather and also the heavy rainfall coming up through the rest of this week and into the weekend. So for the severe weather, we're kind of in all three of these uh, storm planning timelines. So for the active weather expected late this evening into tonight, um, needing to stay vigilant and aware of any active watches or warnings. Make sure you have multiple ways to receive warnings if you are within a severe thunderstorm or a tornado warning there. And then for the severe weather tomorrow, make sure again your phone can receive uh, the wireless emergency alerts. Make sure that you have plans uh, if you need to take shelter. And um, for the storms later this week, I mean, you can still uh, start planning for those. So make sure you have the emergency supplies that you need. Again, know where your safe places are and have a plan if you are within a warning. And then for the heavy rainfall and flooding potential, really flash flooding can escalate very quickly. Um, so make sure that you have, again, ways to get weather warnings on your phone. With the heavy rainfall and flash flooding potential going into this coming weekend, make sure that if you're on the road or at a campground that you are ready and that you have a plan to get to higher ground immediately. Make sure you never enter flood waters in a vehicle or on foot. And essentially just make sure that you have a plan in place and adjust your plans accordingly if you need to. So this is the end of the weather briefing. So if again, have multiple ways to get warnings, um, make sure to follow us on uh, social media to get updates and our website is weather.gov slash Springfield and that can help you get the latest forecast as we continue through this active stretch of weather.